It's weird for me to be doing this interview here in Corvallis, Oregon, instead of in Missoula, Montana. And I was only in, in Missoula for two years covering you. You've been there for the past 13 years, you played for the University of Montana. How does it feel for you to be at Oregon State instead of at Montana? Well, it's, it's very exciting, but uh, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say it was an emotional decision. Um, our heart and soul in Missoula, Montana, uh, the people, the memories, the friendships that we're leaving behind, um, and more importantly, you know, the, the players. Uh, there's a reason uh, those guys came to the University of Montana and the reason that we chose them. Um, great relationships, high character kids that we know have so much potential. That, that really hit me harder than anything else. Um, we sold them on a message, you know, for so many years, but they understand. They understand that it would take a special place to draw me away. Um, so really, the response has been unbelievable. I haven't been able to talk to all of them, but the ones that I've been able to connect with are really excited for our future and the, and the adventure that we have here in front of us. What is it about this place that took you away from what was essentially your home? The people, uh, hands down. Uh, at first, there wasn't a lot of interest. Um, and then as I had more folks contact me uh, about the potential here, uh, and, and I learned that like Missoula, um, the strength of the or uh, Oregon State University and Corvallis other people, you know, and you look at the success other programs have had, they're, they're being done with great people, high character, uh, and then you see the momentum that's kind of going a little bit with the new facilities, uh, the character of the young recruits. Um, it, it really got us excited, and the more we investigated, the more we were sold. Coming from Montana, you didn't have this level of, of facility, for sure. You got Gil Coliseum, a legendary arena, this brand new practice facility. Uh, how do you use those things to your advantage? Is it kind of like having new toys for you? Well, it, it is, but that's, you know, it's not really what we push you know, in, in our message. We sell ourselves and what we stand for, what we believe in, uh, the, and the sincerity with which we do it, uh, our vision. Uh, and then it's really nice that you can say we've, we've got some facilities here that shows uh, the administration has support and belief in where we're going in the community as well. Uh, but really that's been our strength. Sell ourselves and really what we see happening here at Oregon State. Um, and then it's really neat that they can see these kind of cosmetic things, which are, which are important, um, but, but really sort of the secondary things if, uh, if you really believe in what we're trying to push. During the, the hiring process, the names that were floated out for this job before you were Ben Howland, Damon Stoudemire, people that Beaver fans are familiar with. When you got hired, a lot of Beaver Nation, so to speak, I think said, who, who's Wayne Tinkle? <laughs> so who is Wayne Tinkle? What do you want Beaver fans to know about you? Well, thanks for bringing that up, first of all. <laughs> no, um, you know, the, the support uh, has been amazing. The reception since we've been here, uh, incredible. Um, what you're going to see are the same things that I think people saw in Missoula. High character, doing things the right way. Um, I tell people that I'm an every person. That's everybody, we include everyone. Every day, we're gonna go, we're gonna go at it with how hard we work. And every play means we won't take a possession off or a moment off. Um, that's what we kind of build the foundation on. And, and we, you know, character, discipline. But it's an all-inclusive thing. We're in this thing together. We're going to represent Oregon State well uh, in all walks of life, on and off uh, the court. And we're going to make them proud. I think uh, tradition and pride are, are two huge aspects. Uh, and we know that there's been some time here where uh, there's been not, not too much to brag about. But we still will sell that the reason we have all of this here are for the people that have gone before us uh, to make this a proud program. And, and we're going to get back to those days. And I think once people get to know me a little bit, they'll see that I'm going to eat and sleep and breathe that day in and day out. Um, and, and they'll see it happen fast. You mentioned the glory days. One thing that your predecessor, Craig Robinson, did was you brought Gary Payton, he brought AC Green back to this program, back to being involved. How important is it for you to connect with the past, to connect with some of those guys? I think, I think it's vital, um, you know, just, just to let them know um, the kind of person that I am, uh, the fact that I am a traditionalist and, and, I, and I'm going to sell that message each and every day um, because even though the, those were the glory days, why we can get back to having some of that success. We know it's a challenge. 
there's some unbelievable coaches and unbelievable players uh, in, in this league. Uh, but we need to kind of bridge that gap if there was one, but reintroduce them into the way we want to do things moving forward. Uh, and I think that sort of adds to the accountability our student athletes will see. They, they see those guys and the fact that, that they had success, they're going to start to believe that they can have success now as well. I think that's a big piece of it. What are your teams going to look like on the court? Well, there's nobody that's going to play harder than us or more disciplined or more together. That's what we're going to sell it on. Um, at Montana, that was probably uh, the, the most proud compliment that I got um, was when people called from my peers around the country and asked, what do you do to get your guys to play so damn hard every day? Um, that's where we're going to start. We're going to be a disciplined program, and it's not just when we're on the court. It's going to be everything we do every day. Um, and then we're going to be more together. You've got to have great chemistry. Um, and if you add those three things, you mix some, some good players in, um, you're going to enjoy success. And the thing we have to sell here early on is what success is. And, and, and you have to do things right in order to get to where it equates to what we want it to on the court. And, and, and we're going to send that message. Our guys will learn it quickly. And when I say we're going to do it fast, that's what I mean instilling those attributes and those characteristics that will somewhere down the road lead to the same success on the court. What's been the reception from the guys currently on the team to your message in the, in the brief amount of time you've been it, able to talk to them? You know, I, I tell you what, we, we had a very brief meeting in the locker room yesterday. Um, you know, I, I was close to pounding the board and slamming my doing headbutts like I normally do. We didn't quite get there. Um, but I saw a look in their eye that, that showed me they were chomping at the bit to, to get after it and then we got some response afterwards um, that that was as excited as they've been in a while so um, they're fired up you know they're looking for somebody to come give them some direction um, and, and, and tell them that that we do have pieces in place and here's how we're going to move forward and so I think they're chomping at the bit and the recruits as well so those were the two initial talk to the current players talk to the recruits we've got time to put a staff together um, and, and then we'll hit the ground running. Yeah, you mentioned the staff. What's the process uh, g short term going forward to, to get the staff together? Well, you know, we've got to open it up, follow all the HR uh, protocol, and I, I've got an idea, um, you know, with a couple that I, that I want to have that are close to me, and, and then we want to see um, uh, going through the process of some interviews. Uh, you know, I don't want a guy that can just recruit. I don't want a guy that can just coach. Uh, I want a guy or a person that can do everything and, and above all have the same character and send the same messages that we're trying to send, um, you know, day in and day out. Recruiting is something you mentioned and recruiting is something that I think is, is a big deal here because it's not a glamour program of the Pac-12, at least it hasn't been in the past sure. 25 years. In Montana, you were at the big dog of the conference, of the big sky. You uh, would get, it wasn't, I don't think, hard to convince people to come there over maybe some of the other places in, in, in the big sky because Montana is, is certainly kind of the big fish in, mm -hmm. in that pond. At Oregon State, um, it's maybe not the case. You've got UCLA, you've got Arizona, teams that are perennial Final Four contenders. How do you get kids away from schools like that? And how do you get them to come to Corvallis? Well, we're, we're going to sell them again on ourselves. And, and if you look at Montana, I mean, we had higher academic standards. Um, you know, we had the fact that we were a rural state. Um, and so it was hard to get people to, to commit to even visiting. Uh, so we had some challenges. And um, we kind of turned those challenges into becoming that chip on our shoulder. So we're going to do the same thing here. We, we may not have um, you know, uh, charter planes taking us everywhere or an unlimited amount of swag and shoes to wear or whatever kids are looking for these days. But you know what? We're not going to recruit the kids that are looking for those things. We're going to recruit the kids that are looking for sincerity, for character, for people that have a plan to help them become successes in their life. Um, you know, and the basketball part is a, be a vital part of it but it's not gonna be the main thing. And, and the people that buy into that message, 
Um, those are the ones that we want, and we're going to turn them into to becoming successes here at Oregon State. One of the things I think that you were successful at doing at Montana, it seemed, was identifying kids early before some other schools did, getting on them early, get them, getting them committed to Montana, and then maybe when some bigger schools came calling, keeping them uh, at Montana. Guys like Will Cherry, Kareem Jamar, Brian Qualley, Derek Selvig, guys who, who were getting interest from, from some bigger schools. How do you do that? How do you identify those guys? Because it seems like a similar philosophy, a, sure. a similar method would work here at Oregon sure. State. Well, you know, you, you have to get out on the road. You have to evaluate. You have to have relationships. Um, and uh, I'll put a staff together, you know, that embodies all, all those things. And um, we'll get out there and, and, and we'll outwork people. Um, there's no secrets in recruiting. Everybody knows the next LeBron James when you walk in a gym. Um, the, the thing is finding the guys that we, we feel uh, fit our mold, and it's the character, the discipline. It may not always be the most talented guy on the team, um, but it's going to be a guy that we plug into our system and is going to become a much better player than others thought. Um, obviously, uh, you can't have a team full of role players. You've got to mix in some high caliber, high talent guys, uh, but we really feel the system we have elevates the potential of the player um, and, and, and the formulas worked, and we're going to carry the same thing here. I, I'm excited to have the facilities, uh, to have the big time attitude we have here uh, as far as doing things top notch. Um, and so that's going to attract uh, a higher level player, but we're not going to compromise uh, the caliber of character that we're looking for. So there's plenty out there, and uh, we're going to send a great message and know that we're not going to have too many obstacles as far as bringing those kind of student athletes here to represent us uh, and, and hopefully to have the success we all expect. Your son Trace is a top 100 recruit rising senior. First of all, the name Trace, it's spelled and pronounced like uno dos Trace, the Spanish number. What's the story behind that? Well, we, I, I like Trace Armstrong, you know, the, old, the football player for the Chicago Bears. I thought it'd be neat to have a son. Uh, I wanted it to be Tra Trace Antonio to sort of represent, you know, some of, uh, you know, the, the, the countries that we played in. Um, but it really came down to, okay, the spelling. Uh, he's the third child. Uh, he was made in Spain. So we thought it was very appropriate uh, to give him that spelling. Now it has been a little bit of a challenge. Some people call it Trez, Tre, uh, but it is the Spanish pronunciation, Trace. Uh, Great kid, and uh, you know it's going to be fun to follow uh, his progress moving forward. People will learn that name and learn how to pronounce it. It certainly seems going forward. How do you balance in his recruiting being a coach that wants a kid of his caliber, who you're close with, to play for you, and also being a father of a highly recruited player who's going to get interest from from all these other schools sure. and making sure he makes the right choice for him? Well, I'm always going to err on the side of being a father. You know, I'm going to be there and answer questions. Um, he, he knows that we're recruiting him every day, um, but really. Uh, it's about the process. There's no reason just because I'm a coach that he shouldn't be uh, able to enjoy that process. And, and if there's another place for him uh, that he feels is a, is a good fit, um, so be it. But uh, uh, I'm just delighted that he's a great kid, a great student, um, and, and hopefully he's going to have some, some wonderful opportunities in front of him. Oregon State, speaking of your family, Oregon State is, is known for and, and touts its family atmosphere. It starts at kind of the big flagship program, the football program with Mike Riley. How much of a draw is that to you and how important is that to you? Well, I'll tell you what, if uh, you know, guys like Coach Riley, Coach Casey, Coach Rook, you know, even Coach Simmons and soccer that we met, uh, if I would have saw any conflicts um, of, of personality there, um, that, that I wouldn't have been attracted to, uh, I would have never thought uh, of coming to this place. Um, arrogance uh, is not really uh, high on my priority list. I'm not a big fan. Uh, in all that I, I did as far as research, um, you know, you hear about what great character guys and people, um, and, and on and on through all the other, you know, we met the rowing coach last night, the men's golf coach. Uh, it's just unbelievable what grounded people through all their successes that they are. And, and that's what was kind of the, the, the driving force uh, behind me trying to get involved here. 
Um, that's, that's who we are, that's what we believe in, and uh, it was a very attractive piece uh, to Oregon State University, and it really makes us proud and has us honored to be here. Right now, the hottest thing in basketball in the state is Damian Lillard, the Blazers, guy that you know well, that you coached against at Weber State. You guys, your Montana teams, went 4-4 four and four against Damian, 2-0 and oh in Big Sky title games. You ended his uh, season, not ended his season, but I guess ended his NCAA tournament dreams in all three of his seasons that he played at at Weber State. What do you remember about coaching against Damian Lillard? Well, it kept us up late at night trying to figure out a way uh, to slow him down. I don't know that you could ever stop him. Um, but, you know, uh, those, those, those seasons that we ended, uh, you know, uh, of their run and their Randy Ray was an incredible coach, had a great staff. Uh, the thing that impressed me the most is, is how no nonsense, no BS, he just went out there and played his tail off and did it the right way. Um, a guy that, you know, the team showed up at 5.30 in Dahlberg to get ready for our 7 o'clock tip. He was already there sweating his butt off because he got a ride over a half hour earlier to get, get prepared for the game. So uh, people ask me, are you surprised, you know, that he's had the success um, that he has? And I say no. And we didn't expect him to have it maybe this quickly. But there was no doubt that he was going to be a huge success because of what he stands for. Um, he puts his actions to his words. He doesn't just talk about it. He's a guy that goes and works about it. And that's the same thing we've been trying to sell to our guys in our program the last handful of years and will continue moving forward. So what a great role model for so many, so many young kids out there. He does it the right way and he's just going to get better and better. How'd you stop him? How'd you beat him? I mean, he's uh, I'm not going to get into the X and O's. We, we had a lot of success until that very last game. Uh, I think we were the one team that held him uh, to under 14 points a game and under 34% shooting. Um, he, did, he did have 20-some against us that last championship game on 20-some shots, um, but we had actually kind of flipped our MO and how we were going to guard him that last game. So. Um, I'm not going to give out any secrets, and I'm not sure that it was our game plan or just maybe he had it off nights. But one thing I know, I'm glad I'm not going to coach against him anytime soon. <laughs> not going to the NBA? No. <laughs> you come from a state, uh, Montana, with, with a strong in-state rivalry. Montana and Montana State. Cat Grizz is about as fearsome as it gets. Now you're entering into the Civil War. Uh, how, how important is it to you to beat the Ducks? Well, that's a long way down the road. You know, we, we've got a lot of things in front of us, uh, you know, moving forward with our program. Uh, coach Altman, unbelievable coach, is already having big success there in a short time. Um, but, uh, you know, as things go forward, um, you can't say it's just another game on the schedule. We know that it means more than that. Um, but it's, it's going to be a thing that's mutually respected uh, and done the right way. And, um, you know, bragging rights in the state are great. Um, but we just, uh, you know, we want to focus one day at a time, and right now it's to get our team buying in and, and headed in the right direction. Before Monday, before you got this job, I think when people Google your name, the first thing that came up was Wayne Tinkle, sexiest man in college basketball. <laughs> you had What's to go like there. You had the to go there. In, you have to go there. <laughs> What's it like being the sexiest well, man in college I, basketball? Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't put a lot of credibility into that <laughs> deal. I think my family made up the committee, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, I tell you, well, the first thing that comes to my mind is there, there must not have been much competition out there. Um, but we've had a lot of fun with it. My chops have been busted pretty good, um, far and wide, from uh, both family and friends. And, uh, you know, uh, if it's something that my wife were to agree with, that'd be great. But I'm not so sure that she does. But uh, we've, we've had some fun with it. Um, but it hasn't won me any game, so it's really just something to joke about. But kind of, kind of, kind of have had some fun. Yeah, you mentioned your wife. You were also called the best family, basketball playing family in the country by the New York Times. Your wife was a star at Montana in the Hall of Fame. Uh, your older daughter, Jocelyn, Pac-12 fans will remember from playing at Stanford. Middle child, Ellie, is at Gonzaga right now, and we've talked about your son, Trace. What's it like being the patriarch of such a talented basketball well, family? Well, that's, that's where I get uh, you know, uh, so much pleasure from. Um, the championships we've won at Montana and the relationships there, incredible. But uh, to see the success um, and really the process that your children have gone through to enjoy that success, 
uh, has been unbelievable. Um, the educations that they've gotten, um, uh, the experiences they've had, uh, it's been a real joy. And, and I tell you, uh, two years ago was the most incredible week. I could probably write a, a book about that week when um, we won a game on a Saturday night to clinch hosting the Big Sky Tournament. Um, the next, or uh, that night, my son and his team won the state championship uh, in Montana. And then the following week, our, our daughters won the respective Pac-12 championship, the WCC championship. So then it led into the Big Sky Championship, and they said, Dad, you can't be the only one not to, to bring home a trophy. So there was some pressure. Um, but then we, we followed through, and it was just an unbelievable week to share that, you know, uh, three of us going to the NCAA tournament, uh, and then our son in high school winning the state championship. Uh, what a high we were on all week long. And the, and the best thing about it was how humble we all remained and um, you know, understood that it was more than just us. We all had a group effort um, you know, brought together to, to achieve greatness. So it was, it was something special to be a part of. Finally, now that you're here at Oregon State, um, what's your vision for this program and, and for you as the head coach of this basketball team? Well, er early on, I think we've got some pieces. We all know we've, we've got to add to it, um, you know, with some, some recruiting classes. Um, but what, what we really have to get to here is have our guys understand that there is going to be a struggle early to implement the system with which we work. And, and that's the, the character each and every day, um, the way we make it all inclusive. We talk about our team and our team stretches far beyond the locker room. Uh, it's the folks that cut the lawns, that serve the food um, you know, at the cafeteria, that teach the classes, um, th that counsel and guide and mentor. Uh, on and on and on. All of those folks are part of our family and our team. And the more or more quickly we can get our guys to understand those principles, number one, uh, and then the discipline and the effort that it takes on the court, that's when we have a chance. And, and so that's priority number one, those things right there. The X's and the O's, that's going to come. Um, but we have to put you know, those things and instill them into the way we live our life each and every day before we can ever think about success down the road. And so that's our challenge. But we'll get there. We'll get there. And we'll make sure that anybody that follows Oregon State Beaver basketball will see teams uh, that outwork their opponent, that outthink their opponent, and that play more together than our opponent. The rest will come. And, and I know early on those things sound pretty trivial, but they're vital uh, to our plan and the way we do things. Thanks for the time. Always Wayne. a pleasure, Appreciate my man. It. Good to see you. <laughs>